Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again answering more of your questions. This question comes to us from Toby Ellis, who's actually one of my patrons over on patreon.com. He threw this question up in our Facebook discussion group and we got some great feedback on it, but I initially thought to myself, immediately thought to myself I should say, this will make a great video. I think this will be of a lot of use to many people. So Toby asks, how do y'all read rhythms? Do you count the entire subdivisional grid you're on, eighth notes count one and two and three and four and, or sixteenth notes counting one E and uh, two E and uh, etc. Or do you count specifically the rhythm? So if you're counting an eighth and two sixteenth notes, you'd count one and a, uh, and not say or think the E. What about tied rhythms? If that aforementioned rhythm was tied to a 16th, 8th, 16th, would you count as one and a, uh, e, uh, <laughs> or would you count all the 16th note subdivisions and just play the ones required? The reason I ask is that I'm always switching between the two ways, but I've never actually asked or seen someone explain slash do it. Man, this is a great, great question, obviously pertains to reading skills. Uh, and I think the answer is all of them, but you progress through them to the point where you no longer use any of them. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, when you look at my shirt, you can see what it says, right? You don't spell it out. You don't think F-I-G-H-T. You just see the word fight and you read it as a whole. Anyone. Again, reading it as a whole. If it, Assuming English is your first language, you probably process this word as a whole uh, and understand its meaning. Now, that's exactly where I am now with rhythms. Anytime I see any rhythm written down, even the one, ones you're talking about there, I can visualize them in my mind. To me, they are words. Now, I know you've probably heard me do this spiel a hundred times, but to me, music is a lan language and rhythmic notation is a language. There's a finite possibility of rhythms that you're likely to have to read. And therefore, if you practice those rhythms, anything that gets thrown at you, you don't think so much about. I'm toying with the idea of writing a course on this very subject of reading rhythms and reading skills and doing a download package on it um, because essentially yeah there's not a great book on the subject and I'd love to recommend you all the things I learned to read with but I did it at university and Ian Scott was teaching me and I have all of his teaching materials of course but really I mean I make reference to this book all the time no, it's, right, it's right in front of me Melodic Rhythms for Guitar the William Leavitt book Berkeley Press. Uh, it's essentially that, but taken up to 16th note rhythms. So what am I getting at here? Well, I think when you begin reading any rhythms, for example, when you talk about, uh, what did you say? An eighth note followed by two 16th notes. So a rhythm that you have probably heard and seen many times, if I click my fingers, da, 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 ba, 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 ba. Now I can, I've essentially vocalized the rhythm without doing any form of counting and that's your long-term goal. You want to be able to see it and hear the rhythm. But if we break it down, you initially are totally going to want to count it as one E and a. Uh. Now the secret, at least the secret for me was this, this picking hand. When Ian was teaching us to read and we were learning to read complicated, and I do mean very complicated, 16th note syncopated rhythms. At fast tempos like jazz fusion heads uh, and you know Broadway show type stuff to be able to read stuff like that you have to be able to deal with 16th note rhythms but in essence it's just permutations of the same old rhythm so the eighth note followed by two 16th notes now I got used to reading that and anytime I saw that I would be processing that as now you see my hand it has this constant motion going down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Now, no matter the rhythm, my hand is essentially moving at that 16 note rhythm. One E and a, two E and a. So if I need to read that rhythm, my picking hand, it happens to be stays consistent like that and that 
I kind of like to think of this as being the little timekeeping machine. That was what helped me to process these rhythms and begin to internalize them. So you're totally thinking, yeah, daka, daka, one E and uh, two E and. Uh. So if we took a 16th note, an eighth note, followed by a 16th note, one E and uh, two E and uh, one E and. Uh, I'm essentially just picking the note where my f where the notes are needed. The hand keeps moving, and we'd have one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh. No thought goes into that, and any time I see that rhythm, ba 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 ba, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and. Uh. So I totally began by processing that rhythm, as individual 16th notes. And this is essentially what everybody agreed on in the group. That is probably the best way to do this. As time progresses, you will probably stop thinking of uh, an eighth note followed by two 16th notes as being one E and a, uh, and you will begin to process it as one and a. Uh. And then in time, you won't think about it at all. You'll just see it and play it. And that's, of course, as I keep saying, I do like to repeat myself, that is your long-term goal. That is the thing you should be working towards and focusing on. Now, if we come at this idea of having, say, uh, a 16th note, an 8th note, a 16th note, and then that repeated but syncopated with a, with a tie, um, so you're, yeah, you're syncopating the second B. Now, rhythmically, I will process that as being just this, right? We have 1 E and a 2 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a da 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 now this has put me in a corner a little bit. I'm essentially going to have to keep putting these rhythms on screen now, but that's fine. I like making an effort with my videos, don't I? So you should support me on Patreon. That's what you want to do. Do it now. Anyway, so if I put this rhythm on screen, now here we have um, an eighth note, two sixteenth notes, and then that sixteenth note ties into four more sixteenth notes. So rhythmically, I, I know I have this feel. One E and uh, two E my hand just moves and takes care of that rhythm. So we'd have one and uh, two E and uh, one E, three, four, one E and uh, two E and uh, one E and uh, two E and. Uh. Now it doesn't matter how complicated the rhythm gets, that's my thought process behind this. Two sixteenth notes, eighth note, tied across to an eighth note, dotted eighth note followed by a sixteenth note. So two sixteenth notes, eighth note, tied across to a dotted eighth note and a sixteenth note. Still got this motion going. We have one E and two E and uh, one E and two E and uh, one E and two E and uh. It's easy for me to process that because this is doing all of that one E and a motion for me. That doesn't mean long term that the, the hand will always do this you will eventually get to a point where you have started to internalize the sound of a rhythm that you see, and then your picking hand will be a little bit more free to do the things that you want to do. But the whole point is we're using this rhythm hand as being the thing that helps us internalize these rhythms. So that's the advice that I would give you, Toby, and hopefully that was of use to you. It was a huge use to me. I spent a lot of time on my reading while I was at university, and yeah, it became rather automatic. So um, continue down this road and you'll, you'll definitely get where you want to go. Finally, huge thank you to these people over here on uh, Patreon. These guys are some of my supporters over on Patreon that support me, as various, support me at various tiers. In fact, you'll see Toby's name up there. So thank you very much for your support, Toby, again. If you would like to join us on Patreon, it is a lot of fun. Private patron-only Facebook group, video requests. Just get to see a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. I just uploaded a video telling some um, rather naughty stories, industry stories that I... Uh, I could never really post on my my YouTube for public consumption, or I'd be I'd be annihilated by the uh, guilty. So um, yeah, if you want to check us out on Patreon, you can do so by clicking up here. Like I say, as little as a dollar gets you access to all of that stuff. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking this button down here, and there are two more of my videos here and here. Any questions, please do drop them in that comments box below. I'm always here, happy to uh, respond, be criticised usually get back to you with some abuse if that happens. <laughs> anyway, much love and I'll see you for another video soon. Bye.